Richard D. Johnson is uh, has been uh, kind of lighting a fire here in Chicago of, of just uh, everybody's talking about him, and for all good reasons. Um, I heard about him through the folks at WDCB actually, and uh, and I can tell you I was here for the sound check. Uh, it's it's uh, for good reason, for very good reason. He is an extraordinary pianist. Uh, I come back at the top of the second set. And we do a brief interview, so uh, and it's all part of the radio show. So I will be back, and we're going to learn more about Richard's history, where he's from, um, a little bit about his, just sort of his trajectory. But he's come through Wynton Marsalis' Septet, the Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra. Uh, he's been a, a U.S. ambassador for jazz, working for the State Department. And uh, I've learned a couple other really interesting facts that I'm going to save uh, about Richard and his career uh, that we'll talk about a little later. But uh, he extremely well pedigreed and oh my god what a great player with uh, Charles Heath on the drums and uh, Dennis Carroll on the bass this is the Richard D. Johnson trio please welcome them thanks <laughs>
Thank you, thank you very much. Give it up, Charles, the Groove Master Heath on the drums. That's right. And the bass man himself, Mr. Dennis Carroll. That song was an original entitled Say It Ray, and I wrote that for the great bass player Ray Brown. He was known for his groovy, funky, soulful tunes, so I wrote that for him, and hopefully the spirit came across with that one. Um, this next song we're gonna do is part of an incredible musical suite written by the great Leonard Bernstein. We've had the opportunity over the past several weeks to play trio, and it seems like everyone has taken a liking to West Side Story. So, oh yes, give it up for Mr. Leonard Bernstein. So these next five songs we're gonna do are a few of the compositions. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a great musical turned into a Broadway show. Um, the song's amazing. And we're gonna start with Something Is Coming, and then we're, okay, all right, yeah, woo woo. <laughs> and then we're gonna go right into Jet Song, yeah, and then immediately following that, we're going to go into the second most requested song, which is Tonight. Yeah, and then after that, we're going to go into the first most requested song, which is Maria. And then we're going to end up with I Feel Pretty. That's right. So, you know, hold on to your seat, sit back, relax, because we're going on a journey. We're going straight through. We are not stopping. All right, so get prepared. If you need to go to the bathroom, you might want to do it now. <laughs> if you need to get a drink, you're going to have to wait till intermission, I'm told. But make sure you get prepared because this is going to be a journey.
All righty, that brings us to the close of this set. Did you guys enjoy that? <laughs> so hopefully you felt some swing, we'll try to bring you some good music. Um, like I said, I love West Side Story, we love it. And it's always an honor to play the music. So we're gonna close out with this short Sea Jam Blues. Um, we're gonna take a little break. Enjoy yourself, have a libation. You know, we're gonna take a little break and come back with some more swing for you. So if you had a good time, thumbs up. All righty, we'll stick around and thank you, Steve, for having us and we'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the Richard Johnson Trio. Richard Johnson, Charles, Dennis, Carroll. They'll be back after a short break. The bar is now open. You are the luckiest people in Evanston. We'll be right back. Hey, Richard, come on out. <laughs> Richard Johnson. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the show, this is uh, all of our shows are recorded, and we are, they are broadcast later on WDCB 90.9 FM. And this evening we are here with Richard D. Johnson, and uh, it's, it's I, uh, I was telling Richard before the show that um, I've been involved in the music community in Chicago for decades, and it seems like after a while you kind of know everybody, and this Richard was new to me tonight, and it's such a thrill both to hear brand new, incredible talent that I was, uh, to this point, uh, had not heard live. And secondly, when I talk to him, it's all fresh. That's really fun for me, because um, I don't know anything about you. Well, and so okay. how fun is this for me? Great. <laughs> and I hope you're Great. along for the ride. Hope I don't so, scare you. Um, <laughs> so there, I, have, I have several questions that have just been, uh, sure. well. Lay it on me. Some, <laughs> some just kind of <laughs> basic stuff. Like, first of all, you're from, from Pittsburgh, yes? Yeah, I was born in Pittsburgh, and then shortly after that, my whole family, we moved to Ohio. Ah. And I lived there until I was nine, and then my dad got transferred again, and then we went to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, transferred again to Boston. Wow, so you were all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad worked for Sears, and uh -huh. they kept promoting. So my whole family, you know. I see. So, and, and you and you started playing, I was reading about you, you started playing when you were just like five. Yeah, my dad plays. My dad oh, plays, really? Yeah, ah. my dad plays uh, organ and piano. So I see. You know, I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, wow, you started five, it was amazing. I said, not really. In my house, the piano was like a computer today. Uh -huh. You know, kids go over to it. If they want to send an email or a text, you just do it and you go on. You don't mm -hmm. even think about it. So, you know, for me, my brother and sister, it was like, oh, yeah, there's a piano over there. We go bang on the piano and go out and play. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, so it wasn't until, uh, actually, I remember I was in high school and I was playing uh, trombone, vial trombone. Ah, okay. Yeah, because I learned trumpet at fourth grade. And I was in a jazz band. Okay. And uh, we were in rehearsal and... The pianist just kept messing up this part. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, in 10th grade, like, really, we're going to do this again? So finally, I just put down the trumpet and walked over to the piano and was like, this is what it is. <laughs> and everybody in the band and the director was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I just walked back and picked up the trombone. <laughs> you know? I was like, really? And then he was like, that's not normal. <laughs> and I was like, well, in my family it is, uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and so you're a multi-instrumentalist. It isn't just piano that you play. Well, I don't say that. I mean, I was a kid learning. I don't, I'm not going to pick up a trumpet now and be like, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, that was just something I was learning in school, which mm -hmm. was great. I 
The piano is what I play. I see. Yeah, yeah. Did, and, and did you th then you did you kind of did the academic route as well? And did you did you study classically or did you? I, I did a tiny bit. I mean, uh -huh. when I got to college, I mean, I had to. I went to Berkeley College of Music and then Boston Conservatory and then New England Conservatory, all in uh -huh. Boston. Now, if I if yeah. I'm not mistaken, if I if I remember this right from what I read, you went through Berkeley in two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the, what I did is. I went through the summer, so you know you're supposed to take five courses a semester. I took six. Okay. You know, when I was in high school, I did all these crazy things. I was like, okay, if I do this, I, you know, in my house it was like you got to figure out, have a plan. When my dad went into business, is I used to sell oranges, cut hair. I used to do all kind of things <laughs> when I was 14, 15. Wow. You know, so by the time I got to college, I was like, okay, if I take six courses for two years, go through the summer, take another six, if I can test out of three, I'll be done in two years, and then I can go to New York. So wow. that's what I did, and then I finished, and then they offered me, a, they said, you wanna get your master's? And I was like, okay, well if I do six <laughs> courses, <laughs> <laughs> same thing, so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so this was, this, was, this was really about expedience. This was like, I, you wanted to launch your Yeah, it wasn't career. that I was some brilliant kid, I was just <laughs> like, I need to get in and out so I can play. I see. Because I, I wanted yeah. to play. Yeah, yeah, you I hear know? you. I hear you. Yeah. Wow, wow. Um, and so tell me just a little bit about some of your influences, because I, I, I hear yeah. some people that I guess, but I, I, I don't mm. want to. I don't want to suppose. Yeah, my biggest influence I tell everyone is my dad. I grew up mm. playing in church. He still plays. Um, my whole family comes out of church, so for me, that that soulfulness, the way I grew up, that's crucial. You know, so no matter who I listen to or check out. That's number one on my list. Mm -hmm. Now, when we get to jazz musicians, um, I love the older guys. I love stride piano, um, Oscar Peterson, Jelly Roll Morton, Art Tatum, mm -hmm. Teddy Wilson, Hank Jones. I think just the quality of musicianship and the, what they were bringing at that time was just incredible. Yeah. You know, so that's what I like. Of course, McCoy and Herbie. I got to spend time with a lot of time with Herbie. Um, you, you, you did. You yeah, did. yeah. When I was in the Thelonious Monk Institute, he was my mentor. Wow. So um, we went to South America. I played at United Airlines with him in Chicago. So we got to talk a lot about the piano and just life. So I spent yeah. a lot of time yeah. playing duo with him, or he'd play a song with the band. And after three, he'd introduce me, and I'd play. And then we both play Cantaloupe Island at the end Jeez. together. Yeah, he, he's a blast. He's a cool dude. Wow. <laughs> That's great. You know, um, I wanted to ask you also about the about the, just the setup here, uh -huh. because we had we had communicated back and forth about oh, it, yeah, and, yeah. and one common setup, as you may, and this is obviously just for the studio audience here, but the for the radio audience, I'll sort of describe it. Setup is kind of from from stage right to left is piano, bass, drums across the stage, and that is a that is a common mm -hmm. piano trio setup. But this is different. You are the piano is kind of center stage. Mm -hmm. the, the the bass is to your left, kind of almost behind right. the piano, and mm -hmm. then the drums is sort of in the in the yeah. right <coughs> corner. So well, describe that. Well, this set, yeah, this setup was really popular actually with a lot of the older guys in the 40s and 50s. And Ahmad Jamal he yeah. used to use it. Um, Oscar Peterson, if you look at his videos on YouTube, he would right. set up that way. You know, and I got a chance to talk to Ahmad about it. And um, sonically, it works great, you know, because some people say, oh, you just want to be in the center of the stage, and it has nothing to do with that. It actually has to do with, if I'm playing here, and Dennis is here, he can see everything I'm doing right. in my left hand. Right, it really. You know, so yeah. if I make a change, it's like, oh, okay, next time around, he's got it. The other setup, I'm on that side of the stage, nobody can see the piano or anything. It's also good for the drummer, because where he's sitting, he can see my left and right hand. So if I come with a downbeat, he can hit it with me. Right. On that side of the stage, he's making a good guess. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. There's a whole piano. Yeah, you know, yeah. this way is visually and sonically, it's good. The bass is right here. I can hear everything behind me. Some people think it's strange because I'm not looking at them. But I don't need to look at them. I got two ears. Right, right, <laughs> you know? right exactly. And if I give a cue, they can see me. It's, it's a lot clearer. Right. You know, I don't have to worry about this whole lid being in front of me. And, you know, so I love this setup. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, it's groovy. You worked with Whit Marsalis. Yep, and, and yeah, I just saw him a couple a days ago. Yeah. Can you describe a little bit about, about that? Yeah, I had a chance to play with him uh, 2000, oh, 2004, and uh -huh. 
be in the quartet, septet, and the big band. And, you know, I learned a whole lot of information from him. Touring, um, about concentration, um, just the level of musicianship um, I got from him, just being around, and just the things you pick up from someone with that amount of ability and that amount of focus. You know, people said, oh, you've got a lot of focus. I said, yeah, but you don't know my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot to be learned and a lot of discipline. So, yeah, that was a, that was a great uh, point in my life. Yeah. And you've been in Chicago now for a couple years? Yeah, it's been about two and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, and it's been great. I mean, came here not so much for the music, but, man, I've been playing here more than anywhere. It's like... It's great, you know, I still have my gigs, I go out on the road and travel and play. And I do a lot of educational things as well. Um, I recently just joined the faculty at Peabody Conservatory at John Hopkins University in Baltimore. Mm. So it's like an all-star cast of musicians. Warren Wolf, Tim Green, Chris Fun, Quincy Phillips, it's John mm -hmm. Jones is running the department. So it's like, I call it the Avengers of Jazz. <laughs> 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 you know, so, it's important to me to do the education stuff as well as play, because that's how I learn. Yeah. You know, my teachers, I just talked to both my high school band directors. I still talk to them um, about music, and you know, it's really, they were really crucial in my life um, to keep me playing and put yeah. me in the right situations so that I could thrive. Well, it's, <coughs> I, I, I am dying to get back more music, and I could talk to you for an hour. Hey, but well, I come back. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. but I, I do want to maybe sum up by just saying how impressed and uh, moved I am by your music. It's so beautiful, mm -hmm. so powerful. And n talking to you, hearing your, um, your desire to move the, the genre forward and yet this intense respect for the past. Yeah, I mean, in order really to go forward, really to me, you got to check out what's happened before yeah, you because if yeah. you don't, you're just going to repeat it and not really know what's happened. Yeah. yeah. You know, but the, the guys I found who are really making great strides in this music have done their homework. Yeah. And right, I mean, right. I, I think that's in any art you'll find. And it's great because when you play with mentors or someone like a Jimmy Heath or a Roy Haynes who are still alive and they have so much information, you can actually play with them and say, okay, this is what I'm learning from them. Now I can take it and put my spin on right, it. Right. You know, hence the set we just did, you know, a right. lot of Oscar Peterson, the West Side Story. But I can put, you know, my view on it. And then when I write tunes or do arrangements, I can take that and make it my own. Yeah. You know, but I do want to say for me, it's not about me. It's about the people I play with, too. You know, in this evening, it's crucial that I have other musicians who are great. You know, like the drummer Charles Heath and Dennis Carroll, they checked out the music. And they've been kind to me, and it's it's a great thing to be able to rehearse with people who actually want to rehearse, mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and, and listen to the music because that's not always the situation, right, right. you know. So it's it, my theme is about the group. It may look like one person, but it's not really about one person. Yeah, it's about the yeah. group. Yeah. Well, well said. Yeah, yeah. let's get them out here. All let's right, do good, it. Good. Richard D. Johnson and Charles Heath, Dennis Carroll.
I like my beans and rice. I like my beans and rice. 
I like my beans with spice. I like my beans with rice. Like in the Navy, give me some gravy. I got to have my beans and rice. I like my beans with bread. I like my beans with bread. Did all y'all hear what I said? I like my beans with bread. Like in the Navy, give me some gravy. I got to have my beans and rice. After I have my beans and rice, I like to have a little dessert. Who here likes dessert? All right. Now look, everybody knows I love cookies. I really love apple pie, too. I love tiramisu. I like chocolate cake. I like all kind of goodies. I love banana bread. Trust me. Oh, man. Woo. So after I have my beans and rice, I got to have some dessert. So I said, well, you know what? I need to write a verse about dessert. Because what's a meal without dessert? Oh, I like cheesecake, too. You know, so I said, well, I'll write a little part about the dessert. So hopefully you like some of the same desserts I do, too. <laughs> I like my sweet apple pie. I like my sweet apple pie. Now let me tell you the reason why. I got to have my mama's apple pie. Like in the Navy, give me some gravy. I got to have my sweet apple pie. I like tiramisu. I like tiramisu. I like to know what I do with all that tiramisu. Like in the Navy, give me some gravy. I got to have my greens and rice. Like in the Navy, give me some gravy. I got to have my beans and rice. Like in the Navy, give me some gravy. I got to have my beans and rice. Thank you. Thank you very much.
All righty, that was entitled Prelude to a Kiss with a few other things thrown in. Prior to that, we did Satin Doll, great Duke Ellington standard. Um, we opened up this set with Witchcraft. Hopefully you dug that. Featured our great drummer over here, the Groove Meister. Give it up, Mr. Charles Heath. So right now, we're gonna close out this evening with another original. Um, Oh, we also did my original Beans and Rice, the one I sang on. Yeah. Hopefully you like that. I like food. It is what it is, so I wrote a song about food. Um, right now we're going to end with a song I wrote entitled No Wi-Fi. And yeah, everyone gets that. I really don't have to explain it. But my explanation is in my house there was no Wi-Fi, and I was gone on the road. And I kept hearing, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no Wi-Fi. So I said, I'm gonna write a tune about no Wi-Fi so I don't have to hear there's no Wi-Fi. So whenever I hear this melody, I know there's no Wi-Fi. <laughs> so this is the tune. Um, but before we go on, I wanna thank Steve for having us. Give it up for Steve. That's right, holding all this music, him and his wife with this great space, you know, Promoting this music, that's always important. I'd like to thank you guys for coming out and just being a groovy audience. You know, that, that makes our job a lot easier. You know, we've been all around the world and played for some not so groovy audiences. And it's hard, but we do it. But it's nice to have people who dig what you do. That's right, so yeah, thank you very much, thank you. Uh, my website's RJ Jazz. You can check me out. You can find me here. You can find me there. You can find me everywhere. Just look around, listen for a beautiful sound, and I'm the guy who's going to be on the ground, ready to get down, playing the piano. That's right. So once again, give it up. Dennis Carroll on the bass. Charles Heath on the drums. Steve holding it down. And thank you very much. This is no Wi-Fi.
Thank you. See you next time. Richard D. Johnson. That's Charles Heath on the drums. Dennis Carroll on the bass. Richard Johnson on the piano. How beautiful is that? <laughs>